equation, let me quiet. The equation for a hyperbola looks very similar to the ellipse equation that we used yesterday. There's only one major difference in those. We got uh, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Or we could be the other way and have y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared is equal to 1. If you compare that to the equation for an ellipse that we wrote yesterday, what's the difference? Nope. Bottom was squared on an ellipse. Nope. Very good, Valentina. This one is subtract. An ellipse was add. Okay, that's the only difference that you'll see on that. An ellipse is addition of hyperbola is subtraction. Okay. Now, to go with both of those, the way we're going to do this, if my x squared is the positive one, like in this case, I'm going to have x-intercepts at a0 and negative a0. If my y squared is the positive one, I'm going to have y-intercepts at 0b and 0, negative b. So there will be our intercepts. Now when we graph these things, we're going to have to get some asymptotes. And our asymptotes are going to come from in this case, when our x is positive, they're going to come from negative a, b, negative a, negative b. Got uh, four points that are going to form our asymptotes, a, negative b, and then just the positive one, a, b. Okay, so we will use those four points to connect two lines for your asymptotes. So this first one's your intercepts. This one is your asymptotes. Okay, so over here on the y one, there's my intercepts. My asymptotes on it are going to be the same. Okay, so they're going to be, I need to write them again or put them over there, they're the same. Y'all know what we're talking about? What you need, we'll just jump in and grab a couple of them. Everybody good there? Alright. Get my graph paper rocking. Alright, this first one that we're going to grab says x squared over 81 minus y squared over 64 is equal to 1. So again, we see that this is a subtraction problem, so we know it's going to be a hyperbola. I know that my x squared is my positive one on this case, so that means I'm going to have x-intercepts. So I get those by taking the square root of this a. Square root of 81 will be 9. So I'm going to have x-intercept at 9, 0 and negative 9, 0. So I'm going to count on every line. 2, 3. Okay, there is like a, um, in, the, in the book that I'm using for this, they do give you like a, a <coughs> bulleted list of how to graph a hyperbola, and I haven't written that down for you yet. Step one is to find your intercepts. So we just did that. Now step two, it says to find the fundamental tr uh, rectangle. And that's why I didn't write down. I'm not really, I don't say the fundamental rectangle a lot because what the rectangle, if you can envision, I'll just draw a little one up here in the corner. If you can envision a rectangle, the reason it uses a rectangle is because that's the diagonals of that make the asymptotes. Okay, so I'll go ahead and, and show you what we're talking about on this one. We get those asymptotes by using those formulas that we just wrote down. We just square root all of these, so that's going to be 9, 8, right? And i got to go with all the options, negative 9, 8, 9, negative 8. Negative 9, negative 8. Right? Okay. All right, so if I plot those points now, you'll see a rectangle out of that. So here would be 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 9, 8. 9, negative 8. And 
and negative 9, negative 8. All right, so you can see that connecting those four red ones would form a rectangle. That's called the fundamental rectangle. That's where that comes from. Most important uh, out of that, though, is that's what I'm going to connect the diagonals of to get my asymptotes. Bless you. So my asymptotes, we get a dotted line here. My asymptotes, bless you. I got the sneezes going on. Not really. I almost hit that one. Okay, that gives you those, that rectangle gives you your asymptotes. So now our actual graph, what we have to have, if this point is an intercept, it's got to stay within those, inter within those asymptotes. And if I did draw that rectangle, you would see the side coming down through here, right? My curve is not going to get in the rectangle. So it's going to curve out of it. So that's why some people do go ahead and draw the rectangle, but it's just going to curve out of it and stay within those asymptotes. Same thing over here. If you connected that rectangle, that line will be there. My curve stays out of the rectangle and doesn't touch the asymptotes. So those two red curves are my graph of that hyperbola. Now look at that and when you get it done and before we go to the next one, I want you to remember that this one had the x squared positive and we had x intercepts. x squared was positive, we had x intercepts. The formula that we wrote down on the previous page when the y squared was positive, we had y intercepts. So what where would those two curves be if the y squared was positive? Good, it would be in those sections, right? Very good. Okay, let's do one of those. Everybody about ready? Give you another second there, finish that up. one I've got y squared over 4 minus x squared over 25 is equal to 1. y squared over 4 minus x squared over 25 is equal to 1. Alright, so my y squared is the positive one, so we know we're going to have y intercepts. So we take the square root of this 4 and it would be 2, so very good. We're going to have them at 0, 2 and 0, negative 2. One, two. One, two. Okay, so I know it's going to be something going up and down like that. I still have to get my asymptotes on there so I know how uh, wide or narrow it needs to be. Asym it still goes the A first. Okay, and so even though the A is second here with the X squared, that 5 is still going to be first. Everybody see what I'm talking about? They're flip-flopped because it's X squared over A squared, but I still took the 5 first. through all four options of your positives and negatives. What's the last one I'm looking for? Thank you, sir. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, So I've got to stay outside of that imaginary rectangle, and I've got to stay inside of my asymptotes. So, I'm going to be a wider one, isn't it? Are you all right? 
on that? No problem. you three equations. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. We got no choice in here now. I got 3x squared equals 27 minus 4y squared. Then I got 6x squared equals 100 plus 2y squared. And then I've got 3x squared equals 27 minus 4y. Directions say identify what the graph of each of those would be. Okay. I made this, we did this at the end of the period yesterday, but I made this one a little bit harder because I've got them scrambled up. Okay, so we've got to move some stuff around. In the circles and the ellipses and the hyperbolas, they all had the x and the y on the same side of the equal sign. So if I'm trying to tell what this is, it might help me to do that. So first thing I would do here on number one would be I would move this negative 4y squared over. So I would add 4y squared to both sides. So that would give me 3x squared plus 4y squared equals 27. Okay. Now we talked yesterday about the, the major difference between a circle and an ellipse. A circle is every point on the circle is equidistant from the center, so that means your x and y coefficients are going to have to be the same. Is there any way that those x and y coefficients could be the same? No, no way at all, so it's not a circle. It doesn't have a minus sign in it, so it's not a hyperbola. So it is an ellipse. Very good. Okay, number two here, I need to move this 2y squared over, so I'm going to subtract that, so it'll give me 6x squared minus 2y squared equals 100. So it's got a minus sign, so I know it's not an ellipse. Now, look, check it between a circle and a hyperbola, and you look at this and you say, well, the 6 and 2 aren't the same, so it's a circle. I mean, it's not a circle, and that's pretty, pretty accurate, but make sure that you could never reduce it to the same in any way. But this you couldn't because if you divided by 6, you would still have, you know, it's not, you can't reduce to the same thing in any way. So what, so it is a hyperbola. Very good. All right. On this last one here, I tried to trick you a little bit. What do you notice that's different on the last one from all the previous ones that we've done? The y is not squared. Very good. Only one of the variables is squared. In a circle, they're both squared. In an ellipse, they're both squared. In a hyperbola, they're both squared. So this is not any of the ones that we've done the last two days. What kind of shape do you have when it's just one variable squared? Parabola. Parabola. You got it. More specifically, this one would be a sideways one. Because it's your, no, it wouldn't, no, it would not about scrooge up there. It'd be a normal one because your x is squared, so you would solve it for y. So very good on the, on the parabola. I would have negative 4y equals 3x squared minus 27. Then I would divide by negative 4, so it would be down. Because so I would do that 3 divided by negative 4 would make it a negative. Yeah. Got a couple more graphs to look at now. Got to look at a couple of square root frac uh, square root functions. Everybody ready? Square root functions. A couple of those. All right. This first one that we're going to look at says f of x is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. <clears throat> Alright, so graphing square root functions, these are going to be very similar to our circles and ellipses that we've done. f of x equals 4 minus, or square root of 4 minus x squared. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the f of x. We know f of x is the same as y. So I'm going to do that so I can get some normal looking stuff in here. Because now what I've got to do to start graphing this is i got to get rid of that squared. I said, I said what I wanted to do instead of what I needed you to do. How do I get rid of a square root? Square, square it. I gave you the answer already. So I'm going to square, square. The very good Austin. I'm going to square this entire show here. Okay, so that gets me y squared. 
equals here the square the square root just cancel out so it's just equal to 4 minus x squared well but the x squared and the y squared aren't on the same side yet so I need to move this x squared over so I'm going to add it over so that'll give me x squared plus y squared equals 4 Oh, they're both squares. Yeah, they have to be. Oh. My x and y coefficients are the I same. Um, uh, oh, so it's Good, a Justin. It's a circle. Oh, Good, Austin. Awesome. It's a I circle. Now, I the deal with this is there's nothing being added or subtracted to the x and the y, so the center is going to be at 0, 0. The radius is the square root of 4, so the radius is going to be 2. But here's the deal. You can't just draw the whole circle because f of x was taking the square root of that. What kind of numbers can you square root? Positive. Positive. Very good. If there's a negative underneath there, it becomes imaginary, and we don't know how to graph imaginary. So we're only graphing the positive of this which means that's going to make what kind of shape? If this equation is a circle, but we only graphed half of it, we would have a half circle or semicircle. Very good. So I've got a radius uh, center at 0, 0, a radius of 2, and I'm only going to show my positive side on that. I don't know. I think I've got a, yeah, I don't know how to use it, but we'll try. Oh. There you go. All right, I got one more graph I want to look at. Y'all done well? Hold on, I'm simmer down. just a square root and so we knew it had to be positive so this one's got a square root so you know it's got to be positive but then it's got a negative sign out in front of that so it's going to be the negative piece of this graph that we draw because of that negative out in front okay all right so I don't have to change an f of x they already did that for me but I do need to get rid of that radical how do you undo a square root square, square. so we're going to square the whole thing now when we square that y over 3, remember you got to square the top and the bottom. So that would be y squared over 9. And then here we would have, we're squared it so that negative is going to go away for right now, but we don't forget about that as far as the big picture goes. Here the square and the square root just cancel out. Okay, now I don't have my x's and my y's on the same side together. So I'm going to move that minus x squared over 4 over. So it's going to make a positive x squared over 4. A positive y squared over 9 is equal to 1. That is an ellipse. Very good. Okay. I know that I'm going to have square roots here. I'm going to have intercept at 2, 0. And negative 2, 0. What else am I going to have? 0, 3, right, for my y squared. And 0, negative 3. Okay? Now, when I put these on here, right, 2, left, 2, I need both of those. I'm not going to need both of these. Up, 3, down, 3. Which one of those that I just drew do I not need? Oh, no. Which one of the up and down one? Well, it would be the downer. No. Nope. It's got this negative in front. Uh, 
You're right, but this is the actual equation for an ellipse. We had to go back to our original equation and know we don't get to draw the whole thing. So because it's a square root there, it's positive, but then they threw that negative in front. So we're only going to draw the negative part, which would be the part down here. Okay, so this point there didn't mean a whole lot to me. So that would be your graph. It's up here in the lines. You can pick curved lines. I knew the whole time. I saw her switch from the little line thing to the pin. Alright, um, we've done circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, and then half circles and half ellipses or semicircles, however you want to call that. What we're going to look at on Monday is an intersection of two of these. Like we've done systems of linear equations and we found where two lines intersected. Now we might have a line intersecting a circle or a circle intersecting an ellipse, all that kind of stuff. And we've got to find those points of intersection. That'll be the last thing out of this unit. I told you this was a short unit. That'll be the last thing that we look at on Monday. Plan on doing a test Thursday next week. Okay, this, this unit just has three sections. Bam, 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 it's over. Friday, Friday. Then we're graduating. Two conference games next week. All right, good deal. <laughs> that would have been a good idea, though. <laughs> I'm really